good morning what's up you guys um i just wanted to talk to y'all right quick i hope y'all doing well um i just want to do a quick video because it was just something that i was thinking about while i was walking and because i'm facing my own um kind of like eating disorder to a to a degree because a lot of times we don't realize that we're trying to fill void and this is why we, we all have like vices that we use to cope and some people have eating disorders some people have smoking you know you gotta go to your weed your cigarettes your hookah you gotta drink your liquor you gamble you gotta have a bunch of sex like you know um flicks all type of stuff and if you truly know and if you're truly feeling like you're tired of being held back by that addiction um and even if you don't feel like you are i believe that you should be praying to god to deliver you from that because especially if you're a child of god that's not stuff that he wants us to do he wants us to be healthy and whole and he wants us to come to him to get the deliverance um he wants us to do that so you need to be praying for deliverance from that issue continuously pray about it getting your word fast sometimes if whatever you're battling against you need to fast from that thing you need to go without that if your addiction is social media if you feel like you spend too much time on social media you need to fast go on a three-day fast from that thing delete it you know and once you do that whatever your issue is that you're battling against you need to convert the energy that you put in there and convert it channel it to something healthier so instead of sitting on social media scrolling youtube watching a bunch of binge watching a bunch of videos instead of binge eating instead of binge smoking instead of going on a a, a sex spree where you having multiple occasions a day with different people and whatever your issue is channel that energy into something else that's conducive to your growth channel it into something that's going to close the door for them unclean spirits because the things that we the vices that we use to cope with the void that we have from not facing the root which i always talk about is our childhood traumas past relationship traumas friendship traumas um, you know, just feelings of unworthiness because of things that has happened in the past, rejection you may have faced, abandonment issues. You have to get to the root. You have to find the cure. You can't just kind of, you can't just keep trying to mask it, put a band-aid over the pain and by going to these, these vices that we go to, to cope, you know, um, you, you can't keep doing that because that is only bringing you further down it's only a detriment to your health um it's not good it's not good and it's not something that god wants for you we know life is hard you know like for me i used to smoke a lot so now i take that energy instead of getting up being on wake and being on wake and bait i get up go outside go walking like literally i literally used to as soon as i would wake up i roll up if I had a blunt in the in the ashtray from the night before, I go finish that off. Like soon as I wake up, like literally wake and bake. Wake up, go hit the go hit go yeah. So um, now I get up, and go walking. Like literally, as soon as I get up, I go brush my teeth, put my clothes on, and go outside, go walking, go jogging. Um, instead of getting up, getting on social media, you can get up, go exercise, get up, and go garden go do something like go on a go on a hike go work on whatever your business is um you know go read go read your bible go pray but it's still something that you have to continuously do because you can say your morning prayer and then after that still go to whatever that vice is you can read a couple verses of your your bible and then as the day you go because you have 24 hours in a day so it's like in your 24 hours of your day you have to be filling that time with healthy options with healthy vices so that you're not going back to the things that are bringing you down per se that are opening the doors for the unclean spirits to come in that are opening the doors for you to continuously feel and carry on activities that are only going to lead to your demise so you don't want to do that 
I mean, it's not the easiest thing because I now notice too that even though I get up now in the mornings and I go walking and stuff, but as the rest of the day go on, like, okay, I might be reading my Bible. Okay, I might pray, but it's like, okay, I don't want to read all day. That That's not even realistic for me to be reading a Bible all day. That's not realistic. It's not realistic for me to literally be just praying all day, even though I do pray to God. I talk to God all throughout the day. But in between that, I still have to, in between that, I still have to do other things. And I will sometimes find myself um, going on my binge eating. It's like, oh, I don't got nothing else to do. And then I'm, you know, I am I still have stress things that bother me. Um, just about circumstances or whatever, like we all do. Like you never just in a place where you're completely, have no worries, you know? So it'd be things that might come up and it might make me upset. And I'm like, oh, I might just go eat. Or even just cooking for my kids. I might be just tempted. Oh, I'm about to just eat this, like forget it. Even though I know I have goals that I'm trying to accomplish with my body, with getting my health in order, um, just to cleanse and get my body right, get better eating habits. Um, Cause I'll do good for a while and then I'll go back into eating bad. It's like a, a, a sugar addiction that I have that I'm trying to break. That's a huge one for me. I'm trying to break the sugar addiction. I thought weed was bad, smoking was bad. Nah, that had nothing, nothing on this food addiction that I've been battling all my life. You know, I've been battling food addiction all my life. And that is something that I really want to break. Getting, I'm trying to get a healthier relationship with food. And even when I get upset, because I notice that when I get upset or if I get overwhelmed, stressed out, I'm going to go to the food. I don't go to the weed no more. So now I'm going to go to the food. And I'm going to eat me all these carbs that I know I'm supposed to eat. I'm going to go get all the junk food, go to the store, buy junk food. I like buying stuff that it's really going to do my body more harm especially with me trying to lose weight it's like why are you still going to eat that stuff when you know you're going to feel bad after and i do i'm feeling bad after i eat it but in the, in the interim i'll be like oh man i'm gonna just go eat it but then it's like it's only doing you more harm than good because it's self-sabotaging behavior it's not getting you to close to your goals it's not removing the problem away you're just coping with the problem instead of really addressing the issue that's at hand and putting in the work to fix that issue versus trying to cope through eating um so really i just did this little quick video just to say channel your energy like you know i'm learning to do the same it's not the easiest thing um and especially if you battle with an eating disorder like um that's a lot of people problem like you ain't big for no reason you got an eating disorder period you might think that you're not you don't but you do and even people who are not big right because some people don't get big they could eat everything and i be getting mad at that about people i be like this person can eat all of this but i also see some people don't have a, such a junk food disorder either like i have i'm addicted to sugar um i'll eat and i wonder why my kids like that but the whole time it's because i'm like that i'll eat a whole bunch of junk food and don't eat no dang on real food like that's not cool um but it's like i just go back and forth with it i'll be doing two weeks doing great with my eating then something come up i'll be like oh it's just like you know enemy be playing tricks on my head like oh you know that's gonna taste good and i know it be tasting good <laughs> but now i'm just like i'll be like god just when i see it just make it taste nasty for me and it is like some of the things it is like as soon as i eat it now it's like my stomach will hurt so i'm like all right i can't i can't have it no more um you know i just know that god trying to purge that stuff from out my body from out my taste buds i'm like just allow my taste buds not to even like that stuff no more um and that was one of the goals that was on my vision board was to this earlier this year when i did my vision board for 2023 that's on my vision board to eliminate sugar out me and my children's diet like um but all in all you guys i just you know i'm about healing us mind body and soul get to the root of your issues that's causing you to deal with the have these vices <laughs> it's life it's always going to be challenging. life is always going to be challenging but we have to figure out healthy coping strategies to get through those challenging times and it ain't always about just smoking it away, eating it away. Sometimes it's literally just sitting in it, praying about it, fasting, and seeing what what is it that I can do to change this, if it is anything. And if it ain't nothing I can do to change it, then you have to just learn to 
move on from it. Like, if it's something that you can change, then you need to be asking for direction from God on the many steps that you need to be taking every day to change your situation. If it's something that can't be changed, some things you can't change, like trying to change a person because you love them, you can't change them. And that's something that you have to accept. So now it's something that in a, you have to put yourself in a position where it's like, I want peace. And peace for me looks like stop badgering this person, stop expecting something out of this person that they cannot give me right now and removing myself from the situation so that I can focus on my own health because focusing on them is only deterring your health because it's causing too much stress on your heart. It's causing you to consume your mind with too much of that versus what you need to be doing. That's going to be conducive to your own health, to your children, to, you know, your career, your goals, whatever it is. And even with that, don't act like running to work is going to solve your other problems. You have to get to the root of your problems. And like I said, the root of a lot of our problems is unhealed childhood traumas. The reason why so many people are so codependent is because you have abandonment issues. So now you cling to anybody that show you a little inch of fake love. Fake love. And because you're holding on to what it was, what it once was, and you're not seeing the reality of what you're dealing with now. You don't realize that you had been dealing with a representative when you first met them, when you first got with them. You're not realizing that the bad times have outweighed the good times. And even sometimes, sometimes it's not the case that the bad times outweigh the good times. But sometimes those bad times are so deplorable that it's... It outweighs all the dang going good because it's like that act that you committed is it's like no coming back from that. Um, you know, but one thing I also am realizing is you have to have forgiveness for those who have done you wrong. I know like a lot of people don't want to hear that because you're like, they did this, they did that. And I understand that you you talking to a person who then been backstabbed. I have betrayal trauma, but it doesn't serve your heart you you want your heart to be healthy you don't want to be stroking out and dying because your heart is full of so much hate and so much pain call and then when your heart is bad your heart you need your heart to live so you don't want to have a bad heart you don't want to have so much pain and turmoil going on in the heart you need this organ so you don't want to hold on to stuff that is only going to build up hate and frustration. You need to let that hurt go. It's not to forget things that happen because you'll never forget it. Some things is unforgettable. Some things you're going to always end up thinking about, you know, but you have to handle the emotion for when you think about that. Like you'll know you're healing. You'll know you're healing when you can think about it in your emotion. It doesn't make you so angry or don't make you so sad anymore you could easily be able to talk about it now you know and that's why it's important to begin talking about it because a lot of us we don't like to talk about things because it's like oh i don't want to think about that the the pain that you feel just from the flashback of the situation um you don't want to think about that but you cannot escape you cannot run because your subconscious knows what happened. Your subconscious knows what happened. And because of that, you have to face it or it's always gonna carry on with you. Even when you get older, you people be 80 years old, they die still with that pain on them because they have never addressed it. You just swept it under the rug. We're not sweeping things under the rug. That's what the old traditions did. This generation is about healing the, the lift that mat up and get off all that dirt that you just that you didn't swept up under there get it out and really clean it up don't just dust it up under there you want to clean it up clean it up address it talk about it talk about it until you get to a place where it doesn't really even hurt to talk about you feel relief from talking about it you feel victorious from talking about it because you know that that situation didn't break you you still here? Um, I kind of talk about this in, you know, you're a survivor. You, you go, you want to go from victim 
to survivor to thriver. You don't want to stay in a victim mentality. You don't want to stay in a survivor mentality. I survived this. I survived that. You now want to turn that survival stage into a thriving stage. You want to turn that pain into purpose. And that's what Survivor to Thrive is all about. That's what my channel, that's why it's called Survivor to Thrive because I'm not a victim. Yes, in all actuality, you may have been a victim of you know a certain type of abuse or whatever. Um, but you're not a victim. You don't want to live in a victim state of mind. Like, I don't need no pity parties. I don't need you feeling sorry for me. I don't need, I don't, I don't want you feeling sorry for me, baby. You don't need to feel sorry for me. Yes, it's sad. Some of the things that have happened, it's sad. Okay, you know, and I do appreciate it, you know, that you have some compassion for me. But you don't want to stay in that victim state, you know. And then you go to survivor state. You don't want to stay in your survivor state is when you become confident enough to talk about it. You get comfortable with talking about it, you know. But when you get become a thriver, it's like you have no shame, no guilt from none of that stuff. You're not embarrassed by what happened, even if somebody did it to you. Because you know, if you're a victim of certain things, you'd be embarrassed to talk about something that somebody else did to you. You don't have shame, embarrassment, guilt. You walk boldly. When you become a thriver, you walk boldly. You have forgiveness in your heart. It don't mean that you're messing with them folk no more. That's not what it means to have forgiveness. It's to clear up your heart space. It's to not hold hate in your heart because you don't have that much space. You don't have the capacity in your heart to hold on to all that damage, all that pain. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity to hold on to all that hurt that somebody can did to you. You don't have the capacity to hold on to that bitterness because you need to make room. Your 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 um heart is the size of a fist, a clenched fist, a clenched fist. It's small. If they say it's like five inches. So you don't have enough space to hold on to all the pain and then stay and then still make room for all the things that you do love, all the things that do make you happy, the new people in your life that may make you happy. You don't have time for that. You don't have the capacity, should I say. You don't have the capacity for that. You know, so that's why it's important to go through the motions, stop just coping and heal, address the root, stop putting a band-aid over it stop just covering up the wound let it breathe let it air out let it heal naturally let it heal get to the root you don't want to be like these doctors out here where they just giving you treatment you keep going back you keep going to the the, the, the doctor because you got whatever illness you have and they just giving you medicine but they're not getting to the root of what is keep causing those headaches what's keep causing your you to have seizures or you know whatever it is that you you have for some people coochie issues what keep causing you to get them yeast infections what keep causing you to get bb let me tell y'all and if you have an habitual of that it ain't just from your diet it, your diet do play a part into it but you need to be mindful of who you let it stick up in you seriously um but that's a whole nother video um, because people will, especially women, women like to make up so many excuses for why they having this. And also your panties that you wear play a big part. Like you have to wear cotton panties. This, that's a, that'll be a whole different video. <laughs> Cause I get the, one thing about me, I'll get the going in. Um, but I speak on stuff because I know, because I've been there and I know from experience, I know from experience, I have a hell of a lot of experience in my almost 30 years. I'm about to be 30 soon. Ugh. It's like so bittersweet, but I'm so excited, like, cause I'm really a woman now, like, and because I'm healing inside out, I'm really becoming a woman, not just a little girl. Because even though I'm in a 29 year old body, you know, I still have a lot of well, I had it still kind of processed and got a lot of little girl ways because of how I handle things. So I don't want to act like a toddler and lashing out when I don't get my way, like a little toddler. Like, now I want to handle stuff like a woman, like a grown-up. So, you know, I'm happy. I'm just excited for what my 30s is about to bring to me. And I'm just excited for where I am headed in life. I'm still on my healing journey. It is not linear. It's not just like a one-size-fits-all solution. It's not going to be like a consistent thing. You're going to have your days when you fall off. But you got to get back up because we're about thriving. And we want to make sure we can bring in... We want to make sure that every day we're on a road to becoming the woman and the man that God called us here to be. 
So I'm gonna leave it here because I made the video longer than I wanted it to be. But turn your pain into purpose. Turn those bad habits into healthier habits that's going to push you further into the woman and the man that God created you to be. And until the next time, you guys, peace.